Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. I'm a teacher, an author, a gardener, a permaculturist and family guy, and I teach people all over the world how to live more regeneratively, how to make living soil happen quickly, how to change their life dramatically to partner with nature. So today we're talking about the other side of it. So people were like, the clay, that was great, but what do I do in a sandy soil situation? What do I do when I have no money and I've got loose sand? It's not just sandy soil. We're talking about just sand. So I've got a global course. I've got this advanced permaculture student online. I've got almost 700 students, but I've also got over 70 educators. So I've got students that are in the middle of the desert. They're in Saudi Arabia, they're in Kuwait, they're in Egypt. They are in Florida, you know, they're near the coast. They're in Mexico, near the coast. So I've got students all over the world. And what I've learned, what works, is very interesting. So you might have seen some of the talks that are online where people talk about how, you know, you need animals always, you know, maybe Alan Savory, they're talking about how, you know, holistic grazing is the key and you just need animals. Well, that's not always the case. The reality is some areas are too brittle. One of my teachers, one of my very good friends, Neil Speckman, has been working on this issue in Saudi Arabia. He's been working in very arid soils that are sandy, that are rocky, that are compacted, that are just so dry. They get less than three inches of rain a year. Some years they don't get any rain at all. And I've also been working with people in Florida. Um, we have the examples of liquid nano clay. Um, being used in Egypt and other areas. And what we've learned from all these examples is pretty fascinating. So if you've got no, no money, and we'll start there and we'll scale up, okay? <laughs> so if you've got no money, the number one thing you need to do is hold that soil, well, that sand together so that it can start turning into soil. And it's the most important aspect, the most important plants from the pioneer species that you can find that are native around are, you might not like this answer, but because they're often spiky, the legumes. And so you might have some spiky native legumes and they're gonna be the thing that you're gonna want. This is why Jeff Lawton talks about wearing wooden clogs in some situations in the arid climates for dealing with that first pioneer species layer. And so you're gonna have them get in there so that they can start nitrogen fixation. And it's these perennial roots, and I'm not talking about annual legumes, I'm talking about perennials. Some people will say get grasses, get animals in there, but in a sand situation, any animal compaction on there is just gonna destroy anything that you are doing. So it's incredibly important that we keep the animals off of this and that we start with perennial roots, specifically with trees. So Neil proved with his system that you want to bring in the trees, you want to bring in plants that can go without rain for multiple years and still be okay and still thrive and grow and still provide a profitable pro uh, product every year. So this is, this is what, what he's been working on. This is what he's been thinking about and building and then proving in Saudi Arabia is not only possible, but is profitable. So he can take soils, sandy, rocky soils that are considered non-arable that are considered not grazable. And he can bring them up to the point where he is getting Moringa Peregrina oil from these trees to the tune of, you know, $400 a year. And it's just all fed off of rainwater. So the key here is to focus on things that can grow in that kind of situation, that can survive in the, the, the heat, because sands tend to get really hot um, if they're uncovered or if things are blowing around and things get uncovered off and they get really hot, cover it up as much as possible, bring in weeds, chop and drop, and let something begin to connect. And so what do I mean by something? So obviously we want, we want the nitrogen fixers there because the nitrogen fixation is a key. It's a real important key to this whole situation. Um, and they they figured out that if you just add clay to sand, you'll create concrete. You'll create this concrete layer on top because it won't 
actually infiltrate. Liquid nano clay infiltrates and it immediately allows you to plant um, plants in there and all this stuff. It's proprietary, but it really shows us what's possible. So if we're creating compost teas, which have the bacteria, um, because most thermophilic compost teas are bacterial dominant, so they're gonna go in there, they're gonna go in the sand, and the bacteria are gonna form the glues, which are gonna make the first microaggregates, so that fungi can then move together and make macroaggregates. So this tells us that what we really need to do is when we plant these trees, we inoculate the root systems, the bare root systems, and it has those mycorrhizal connections as it goes in. Because once you have the fungi tying up what the bacteria are doing and providing, that is the formation of soil. The loamy structure of soil that is all due to fungi's beautiful action. So if we want to turn sand into soil, we need to partner with perennials, we need to partner with legumes, and we need to make sure we inoculate with mycorrhizal fungi, like a broad spectrum, primarily that's glomerular and mycota. So we're talking about, you know, our muscular mycorrhizal fungi. We're talking about things that are going to be like really good for pioneer species, establishing a huge amount of carbon to be downloaded into the soil immediately to start establishing the foundation. So that, that, that's really what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have those things in place. You're going to want to provide some water as much as possible. You're going to want to provide ground cover um, so that those plants um, feel like they're protected and shaded. The more shade, the more moisture retention. Um, the cooling difference also will actually attract moisture. So we can turn these sandy areas into soil. We're turning the deserts progressively into green fields and forests right now. Northern China, they're doing this. In Africa, they're doing this. In the Middle East, they're doing this. This is where we're gonna see the most significant amount of change happen on Earth, reclaiming the areas that we originally damaged. The Fertile Crescent once was fertile, and it can be again. So all the deserts can be turned into Edenic paradise. They can be turned back into savannas, or full on, you know, beautiful, unbelievably gorgeous, tropical rainforests. I mean, it really depends on where we are, but so many of these places once were gorgeous and they can be again if the watersheds are healed and we bring back the biology and we can do that with animals partnerships with animals after we get past that first brittle stage in some areas you can bring the animals on and just do it initially and and, and start there but if you're just dealing with loose sand and if you're dealing with serious amounts of sand in your soil that kind of compaction, it's just gonna shift it around. It's just sand, you know what I mean? That's, the, 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 there's no friction there. I mean, we all know what it's like to run on the beach and feel that like, oh, that's the kind of lack of progress you get when you just put animals on there. They just are gonna destroy any progress the top six to eight inches of soil is making. And that top six to eight inches is where all the action is gonna happen for the most part. So if you've got sandy soil, I hope this helped you. Please put your questions down below and I will answer them. I check all the comments. I'm here to help. And if you are interested in diving deeper into this and understanding what I'm talking about, if you're like, Matt, this, you know, <laughs> this episode was great, but some of it I didn't understand. I need more information. Dive into the Kickstarter. We are almost done with it. There's probably, you know, less than three days at this point, if you're watching this, maybe even less than two days at this point. And it's an incredible opportunity to learn a lot about soil for hardly any cost. The $49 course is essentially what's in the Advanced Permaculture Student Online, which people have said is a $500, $600 value. It's only $49. Then there's the new book, goes even further. It's really exciting. So if you wanna dive in, you know, crawl, walk, run, you know, I've got it all set up so you can do any level. We only have a few days left, so click the link, check it out. It's fully funded, so there's no risk involved. It's gonna happen. There's courses for people at the beginning, who are intermediate, people who are experts, all of it. And we're partnering with a lot of amazing people. So you're not gonna wanna miss this one. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. <laughs>